I'm Matthew Albright. This week we're talking about utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is what most people are referring to when they talk about consequentialist ethics or consequentialism. And the basic idea there is right in the word, you're basing an, an action on whether it's right or wrong on what the consequences of that action are going to be. So if the consequences are good or the consequences are right, then it's a good action. If the consequences are bad, then it's a bad action. So utilitarianism, if we look at the broad idea of utilitarianism without looking at the subsections, it's the good of the many outweigh the good of the one or the few. Um, to use a quote from Spock, uh, so utilitarianism is looking at giving everybody one vote and any action which has the most benefits for the most votes wins the right or wrong issue. Now, on its face, consequentialism, or I'm sorry, utilitarianism, is a, is a very logical approach. And in fact, I think most of us use utilitarianism on a daily basis. And certainly we see it in the, in the headlines. We see it whenever there's discussion about policy. Uh, we've got big discussions going on about healthcare policy right now. And most of the discussions, either for or against, are utilitarianism utilitarian in nature. In other words, the people are arguing, oh, this is going to help the most amount of people, or this is going to hurt the most amount of people, or economically this will hurt the most amount of people, economically this will help the most amount of people. So uh, utilitarianism is a, is a, is a mathematical, it, theoretically a very logical approach to ethics. Now, uh, I'd just like to, to touch on uh, some of the disadvantages. Before I go there, let's just bring out the advantages which probably are obvious to everyone. Uh, certainly if you, you're making decisions about a society or if you're making decisions about a family, say, then utilitarianism is very helpful. And utilitarianism is especially helpful if you actually do the math. If you do Bentham's calculus, if you go through the, the categories of, of what you should be weighing as beneficial then you'll find that you probably are, 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 are thinking through this decision very, very well. And again, this is based in, 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 in a kind of general sense uh, on, uh, again, the old Greeks who started us off saying that knowledge is everything, that knowledge leads to good decisions. And so utilitarianism takes that and says, okay, well, let's try and figure out what kind of beneficial advantages come from any certain action and put a number on that, put a number on it in very clear terms, give everybody one vote and say the, the people with the most votes, the people who benefit the most, the majority, wins. Uh, very logical, again, based on knowledge, and if you go through the math, and if you think about things that Socrates probably would have wanted us to think about, like, like, uh, like long-term advantages to any one action then you'll overcome what Socrates referred to as artificial goods, those things which just give you pleasure of the moment, so that you know it might be good to, uh, to uh, suddenly uh, give everybody a, a, a joint in the United States to chill them out, but what would be the long-term uh, advantages or disadvantages of that, uh, aside from the instantaneous pleasure that one may derive from a decision which may be beneficial or pleasurable to many people. Okay, so I don't think anybody can really argue that in making decisions, utilitarianism just on its face is probably very helpful. It, it's good to think about consequences when you're thinking about an action. But I'd just like to challenge it slightly. Uh, often when we do this in class, we use the example of uh, making a utilitarian decision um, for your family. And let's say your family has $5,000, there's four people in the family, you, your spouse, little Junior, and little, little Sally, okay? So you're going to give each one of these people a vote, and you're trying to decide where to go on your vacation. Are you going to go to Disneyland, or are you going to use that $5,000 and, say, buy little Sally a piano, okay? So thinking this through then, you give everybody a point and you figure out what would be the long-term advantages, what kind of money could be saved, who's going to be happy, who's going to be unhappy, and, and this is all well and good and usually it comes out half and half depending on you 
know, the different characters and personalities of your family. But what we might want to think about is the idea in, for example, a family, when somebody needs a little bit more, somebody should get maybe a little extra vote than everyone else. And, and just to think uh, broadly, right, uh, most families, the parents are the ones who get a little bit more, okay? And they should get a little bit more. They're probably the ones working for the, for the money. They're probably the ones who are more judicial in their, in their thoughts. So you ask a little junior whether he wants to see Disneyland, he's not going to think about long-term consequences. He's going to say yes. And well, daddy and mommy might think about this a little bit, a little bit more thoroughly. So the first thing is, should we really give everybody one vote? Now let me challenge that one more way. What if Sally is really having a rough year? Little Sally's having a rough year. She's not doing well in school. She's not doing very well with friends. And little Junior, you know, Johnny Junior is doing great. And he's very happy. And he's a happy kid. And he doesn't worry about anything. Well, maybe in certain times, certainly in a family, but you can think about this in national policies as well. A certain time, maybe you should look at that minority vote. Maybe you should look at Sally and say, you know what, we've got to be kind of extra special. We should do something special for Sally. Because little Johnny Jr. doesn't really need it. We don't really need it. We should think about maybe spending more, a little bit extra time, a little bit extra money on Sally, even though the advantages to all of us won't be that great. So this will be the, the argument about utilitarianism and how it treats minorities. And we can think about that in national politics, international politics, but I think we can also think about it in our own personal lives and in our own families with utilitarianism. I'd like to challenge utilitarianism one more way, and I'd just like to say, again, utilitarianism is mathematics, it's knowledge, it's logic. So let us, let us think of an instant where you might want to use, where, where you might think that utilitarianism is not the best idea. Let's say my wife goes off on a business trip. All right, she's off on a business trip, she's all by herself. She goes to the bar in the hotel afterwards, and she's getting the winks from the bartender. She's getting good vibes from the bartender, okay? And then suddenly the bartender proposes to her, makes a proposition to her, and she has a choice on her hands. Should she be faithful to me and come and run back to me in a day or so, or should she stay and see what happens with the bartender? Now, the next step, I think, is what challenges utilitarianism. What happens when my wife sits down at the bar and does the math? She does the math to try and figure out whether she's going to cheat on me or not. There's something wrong with that picture. Uh, maybe it's something wrong with that picture because it's my spouse, but there's something wrong with that picture. There, there'd be something wrong with the idea of my wife coming home right from that weekend and saying hey you wouldn't believe what happened I was in the bar last night I had this guy come up to me he was a sure thing but don't worry about it honey I wasn't gonna go with him because I did the math and it didn't add up you won yeah I won that time right so I'll leave it there as as a kind of challenge it'll lead us into the the next set of ethical theories which are duty ethics which push away from consequentialism and say, don't think about the consequences. Don't try and plan whether your action, whether good or bad, by, by how things are going to come out. All right? Duty ethics is going to say some decisions, maybe all decisions, have to be made on what is actually right or wrong. And it, it could be, I think, that example of my wife in the bar would have been one of those where if you're thinking about it too much, I mean, well, I'll let it go. Good luck.